Okay. Stereochemistry. Any questions about stereochemistry to begin with? Everybody's right. Keeping a list of your questions. If you're not generating questions, you're going to have difficulties. You're going to come out of a test with lots of questions. <laughs> you don't want that to happen. You want to get your questions identified and then answered before the test. Layla. For Fisher projections, um, does it matter, like, like in, in D, for the first alcohol, we viewed it from the top, and then the second, we viewed it from the bottom? Does it matter, like, if you switch the views, like, does it, basically, does it matter where you start with Fisher projections? Probably. Like, did it have We viewed it from a certain way because we probably wanted the methyl to be going away from us. There's methyls in these cases. Because when you look at the fissure, the thing at the top was the methyl. And if it's at the top, it's going away from us, right? Yes. So we looked at it with it going away from us. Because okay. that's how we were going to draw it. We'll do other examples and see if we get, get your question answered. If not, let's look at it. Okay, let's see how, uh, what we need to do to finish up stereochemistry. Again, we'll cover this here, B, this afternoon or tomorrow afternoon. We'll have our next quiz on Friday morning. Uh, okay, back up top, homework. How do you do all these? Did I find any chiral carbons in the compounds below? Here, any chiral carbons? Looking at these rings here in particular, sometimes these give a little, some questions. Uh, any of the rings in the, any of the carbons in the ring chiral? How about this one? Does it have? Is it a tetrahedral carbon with four different substituents? No. It's got a chlorine, it's got an H, but this way and this way is the same. Same, 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 same. There's no distinguishing if you go this way or this way. Same. <coughs> There's no chiral carbon there. Now it is tetrahedral here. And since we're showing three things here, yes, you would show the chlorine maybe four. But it's tetrahedral. Or you could show it back. Are these this Different compounds? No. Same or different? Same. Who says same? Who says these are different? Okay, these are indeed the same compounds. Everybody see that? Why? Why? It's plain symmetry. Yes, that's a good play. Where's Waldo? That's a great place to, to look for something. Just playing the symmetry right through there. <clears throat> half a ring, half a ring, half a chlorine coming forward, half a chlorine going back. What does this tell you about the mirror image? Mirror image will be? Same thing. Is that over there the mirror image? Yeah. It doesn't look like it's mirroring. The mirror image would be I mean, the exact mirror image would be this. Okay, if I put this up here, that would be the exact mirror image. Is this the mirror image of that? Yes, it is. Because we said you get the mirror image by keeping the backbone the same, just switching it from bold to dash. These are the same. 
Well, guess what? These are two. Because if a compound has a plane of symmetry, the mirror image is the same thing. All three of those is the same thing. Because the, car because the com carbon is not chiral, you can draw it however you want. It doesn't matter. You can draw it like that. That's, it's the same thing. Just like I can draw my right hand with the thumb over here, or I can draw it over there. It doesn't matter. It's still the same compound in this case. Okay? What about this compound? That's why very often we would just draw this generically. I mean, you could draw it bolded or dashed, but a lot of times we just don't even bother because it's like, your choice, either one works. Um, we typically only draw things when it matters. Over here, any chiral carbons? I go this way, is that the same as going this way? So do we have any chiral carbons here? Why not, Troy? Uh, this SP2 carbon is one body of these other things. Yes, this carbon is not tetrahedral. That's SP2 trigonal planar. It does not have four different groups attached because there's no H here. It doesn't matter. You get two different ways. There's only three groups here. The carbon strip on planar. And a planar carbon has a planar symmetry. The fact that it has a plane is in the name. Trigonal planar. And if that carbon has a planar symmetry, that's not a side of, of asymmetry. Well, neither is this here because that carbon has two H's and so you can split right through it. A chiral meeting not chiral. A chiral. How about the third one? Uh, any chiral carbons here? <clears throat> yes, right here. There's a chlorine there, there's an H there. Is this way the same as this way? No, one way you end up hitting a double bond, the other way you don't. This carbon is chiral. There you could show two different enantiomers. You could show that. And then we could show the mirror image. And those two are different compounds. Because why? Well, does this, plane, does, does this compound have a plane of symmetry? Over here, we cut right through there. Can you cut right through here on this one? No, you'd have a double bond on one side and not on the other, right? Right? If we have a double bond here, double bond here, not there. So you can't. Can you cut right through here? Basically, can you find Waldo here? No. No. Thus, the mirror image, which is this, because we know we just switched dash to bold, keep the backbone the same, should be different, right? Indeed, it is. These two are called enantiomers. One, like one right hand, one left hand. How do we distinguish these two? Uh, these both would have the same exact name. Can you name this compound? How are we doing with nomenclature of alkenes, including stereogenic E and Z? Name this alkene. Uh huh? Three chloro, what? Isomers have the same exact name, have the same connectivity. How do you want to distinguish them? 
RNS. You could make do RNS. What do you want to put in front of this one? S. Chlorine's one. What's two? Carbon or carbon? The one with the alkene. The one outside the alkene. How do we do this? Carbon or carbon? Well, what's on this carbon? Two H's. Two H's and a carbon. We list the, car the highest first. There's a carbon on that carbon, and then there's H and H. H, H, H carbon. We list the carbon first. What's on this carbon? C, C, H. Because a double bond is treated as if that carbon is bonded to two <coughs> carbons. Any winner if you look here? No. No, no winner. Any winner if you look here? Yes. Yes, this beats that. Yes. This is two. That carbon is three. The H is in the back. Which means you reverse it. No, we don't reverse it. Low priority group is in the back. What is this? R. I just take dinner. That one over there is S. Wait, when do you reverse it then when the low priority when the group is in the front? When the it's low priority group is coming forward. So in front of this one, we could put R. And now we have a scare chemical descriptor in front of our name. What else can we put in front of these instead of R, S? You could use D or L. Which one's D? Don't know. We would have to have more information in order to use the D and L. And if you had that information, instead of using D or L, what else could you use in front? You could use plus or minus, same thing as D or L. D would be plus and L would be minus. Sometimes you'll see both used. It may say like R plus to the name, if R was plus. Stereochemical descriptors. Okay. Uh, next. Which compound below gives a chiral product when hydrobrominated with HBr? How do we do on this one? What was your answer? Is that a chiral product? Yeah. Yes, we have a chiral carbon here. <clears throat> is the compound as a whole chiral? Yes, we say if you have one chiral carbon, the compound's going to be chiral. It ruins the symmetry of the whole. What if you have two chiral carbons? Could be miso. Now we have possibility of miso. But if you only have one, it's always going to be chiral. <coughs> See, if you react this with HBr, what's the product going to be? Right there? UH on the bottom carbon? Is that product chiral? No. What does this mean? <clears throat> it means if you were to draw this, you could draw it generically, but if you were asked to consider stereochemistry, you would have to... Okay. How many stereoisomers possible for this product? Two. 
two. They're called R and S. Did you draw both of them? I think so. Pretty straightforward. Okay, how many how many stair isomers possible for this product? Zero. You have to be careful what a zero means. Zero meaning there's no additional. I mean, there is one product, but that one product has no additional. There's no okay, of that. Okay. That is. How many different ways can you draw the product here? One way. Draw however you want. You draw that bromine bolded. That is tetrahedral. This is tetrahedral here. I mean. Draw like that if you want. You draw it anyway. As long as you have the, everything connected at the same spots. It doesn't matter. It's like I can draw my right hand on the board like this, or I can draw it like that, or I can draw it like this. I mean, however you want to draw it, it's still the right hand. It's not power. Okay? Uh, making sense? By the way, when we look at optical activity, Take Tyrell. We're going to see things like this. <coughs> well, let's answer the question here. First off, we'll see down here that this is going to give a racemic mixture. What's a racemic mixture? 50-50 mix of the two enantiomers. Okay, we'll see that down there. You've already looked ahead down there and read the chapter. Over there, you're going to get 50-50 mix of it. Equal mixture, 50-50. Why do you get an equal mixture of the two enantiomers over here? Because the BR can attack from the front or back. We've looked at this before. How does the bromine end up bonding there? We first get this carbocation, right? Mu H being here. How does the bromine add? First off, what's the geometry of this carbocation? Trigonal planar. Trigonal planar. Okay. There's the cation. It's swimming around. You are all bromines, bromides. Okay? How are you going to attack? Probably from that side, unless you want to walk way around here. Okay, you make bond. Your bond's going that way. How are you going to attack? This side. Your bond's going this way. And in chemistry land, it's half and half. Because it's all just random. Okay? Half attack from the front, you're going to get the bromine bond forward. Half attack from the back, bromine bond back. Those are your two enantiomers. That's why it's 50-50. Yes, you attack the same over here. Half from the front, half from the back. But over here, either attack gives the same compound. Right? Over there, it gave two different compounds called enantiomers. Got to know such. Uh, what's next here? Uh, Fisher projections. We'll probably draw more Fisher projections. Homework. How many chiral carbons does the following glaucoma drug contain? What'd you get here? Anybody? How many? Five? Power carbons. I see one, two, three, four, five. Where? Where are you looking at? Uh, 
So that's what we're looking at. So we in between the carbon in between the ages, so there's two hydrogens on it. On the uh, five member green where all the other carbons are at. Yeah. There's two, two, H's H's there. two H's there, yeah. not two, not carbon. Did we miss one? How about that carbon there? It's two methyls. Two methyls, yeah. I think that's it, yeah? Five chiral, chiral carbons. How many stereogenic centers? Two. How many? Or do you add the chiral carbons to that? The question is the question. How many stereogenic centers? Seven. What's a stereogenic Seven. center? A chiral carbon there. Yes, a chiral carbon is a stereogenic center. Or site, stereogenic site. What are other examples of stereogenic sites? Double bond. Any double bond? Any alkene? No, on the quiz, you, the only, only one of them was stereogenic, right? You have to choose which one. Okay, which ones of these are stereogenic? Is this alkene stereogenic? Yes, that one is. This one is too. Right now that one's cis. Could that be trans? Yeah. Sure, why not? This one's trans right here. Could it be cis? Yeah. Sure, why not? What about these in this ring here? No. No, alkenes and sex mirror rings cannot be stereogenic. They're all cis. There's no way to make this trans. You make that trans, it could not be a ring. We said double bonds. It's too generic. There's a double bond. Is that double bond stereogenic? Mm. Never. Carbonyl would never be stereogenic. I mean, if we put that there and a chlorine here, and then put draw it like with a chlorine here and that there, are these different? No. No, that's just flipped around. Carbonyl like never stereogenic. Alkenes are yes, okay. What's the answer? How many stereogenic sites? Centers? Seven. Yeah. Seven. How many total stereo isomers possible? 128. Two to seven is 128, right? 128. All right, draw them all. I don't know the exact drug, if it's one of the 128, or if it's more racemic mixtures. I can't remember. I kind of doubt it's only one of the 128 because it's not a natural product. <clears throat> For example, all here's one of the 128. All of these are R, and both alkenes are trans. That's one of them. Here's another one. All of them are R. One of the alkenes is trans. One of the alkenes is cis. That's, okay, there's two of the 128. Can you do the other 126? Okay. Diastereomers. We've already said that. Yeah? Or what's the definition? Stereoisomers that are not mirror images. Stereoisomers that are not mirror images. Have a default category. They have very different properties. Sometimes they can be similar because they do have the same connectivity. But the properties can also be quite different. What's the definition of an epimers? It's written here. Epimer is a special type of diastereomer. Okay? Stereoisomers or diastereomers that differ by having only one center reversed when multiple are present. When only you, when only you change one chiral carbon. Well, it doesn't have to be chiral carbon. Any stereogenic center reversed. Usually we're referring to chiral carbons. Example of this, 
white handout. We can look at the carbohydrate page. First off, why do we learn how to draw fissure projections? Multiple reasons. First off, just part of the course. But beyond that, I don't like that answer. You do want to learn something called it's important and useful. It's useful for helping organize and making your stereochemistry assessments easier. Finding planes of symmetry is easier in fissure projections. Also then, when you get to biochemistry, you'll see that carbohydrates are often drawn in fissure projections. Look at all these fissure projections. Okay? That just has one chiral carbon in the center. Then you can have two, and this is, we did some with two. But you can also have three. And you can also have four chiral carbons. Okay? And this is a total of six carbons. Six carbon sugars, with one of your most common being glucose. Okay? But it's got four chiral carbons, and each one has a certain configuration that makes up makes it glucose. All of these are stereoisomers. Everything, it would have the same exact name if this is a common name. It would have the same exact chemical name. Uh, look at the difference between allose and altrose. What's the difference? One center. One, one center to reverse. Right, right here, this one, one center is reversed. If you just disconnect and switch, you are switching from one configuration to another. R to S. You can determine these. By the way, what functional group do we have up here? Aldehyde. And the rest are alcohols. OH on carbons. But these carbons are chiral, that one's not. Two H's. Okay? They're all the same. They all have the same with these four carbons having alcohol. But the projections are different. What's the difference in these two? Just one change out of four. Only one is changed. So those can be called what? Epimers. Those are example, examples of epimers. But they're also diastereomers, right? Because are these mirror, they are stereoisomers. Are they mirror images? No. The mirror image of this is what? Which one is the mirror image of this? <coughs> None of them are. They're all diastereomers. The mirror image is not shown. And the natural sugars are usually only one in antimer. You gotta be careful, this D is not the same as little d. And you, there's a little paragraph in the handout about that. It's not the same. It, it, it's something we haven't talked about. It, it goes back to a certain single in antimer, but it's n nothing we've talked about. Don't confuse little d with big d. Uh, you may discuss that in biochemistry. Um, is allose and glucose, are those epimers? Yeah. Yeah. That's an, ep that's an epimer of allose. That's an epimer of allose. Is mannose an epimer of allose? No, because two have changed. So it would not be an epimer. But it is a diastereomer. Because it is a stereoisomer, it's not a mirror image. The mirror image would be where all four of these are on this side. That's not up here. 
Ah, uh, by the way, where do the terms erythro and thrio come from? Right here. If you look at your two carbon, well, four carbon sugars, there's two of them. With the OHs on the chiral carbons on the same side, it's called erythros. If the OHs are on the opposite side, it's called threos. And from those names, we can use that sort of terminology for other things. High priority groups on the same side, we call erythro. By the way, I didn't tell you how to remember that. Uh, same side as erythro. If you draw a capital E, you make the lines on the same side. If you draw a capital T, you put one line on one side and the other line on the other, right? That's how I remember erythro and threo. That's different from E and Z terminology because E and Z, the E stands for what? E stands for opposite, two vowels. Here, the erythro, the E, is they're on the same side, okay? Uh, so that's ephemers. You can also talk about where the change is. Okay? These are called C2 epimers because this is the second carbon. And C2 is where the change is. So they're called C2 epimers. Okay? Terminology. So you can talk about things. Make sense? Um, I think the rest we've covered there. Applying stereochemistry to alkene reactions. Here we go. Let's go back and do this. Reaction. What's going to be the product? Show the product in a Fischer projection with isopropyl groups at top and bottom. Here's your product chiral. If show the enantiomer in a Fischer projection. Is your product erythro or trio? Okay? So we have an alkene reaction with all the stereochemistry chemistry built in. This is one of these sort of the, okay? more complex, comprehensive problems of test two. First off, let's do it with it. Forget about stereochemistry. Just show the product with no stereochemistry. Just show the generic bonding. What's going to be the product? Iodide, right? What type of reactivity do we have? Which halogen is the alkene going to attack? The iodine. The iodine is electrophilic. Right? We have dipole, partial plus, partial minus. The electrons of the alkene are going to be attracted to the I plus, the partial plus. Now be careful, this, this is not ionic. It's a partial charge, polarized. Where's the cation going to form, left or right? On the left. Okay, so here, that's, here's your thinking. So. Which halogen is going to end up bonded over here where the cation would be? Chlorine. Chlorine. Chlorine, yes. You see the mechanism? Alkene attacks. Yeah? 
pull down here, kick these off. Boom, 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 boom. I dine now here. Cation here. Ah, hold on. Is this really going to be a free cation? Just actually formed? What, what's going to It's going to be back bonded. These electrons, we know physics. Minus likes plus. These electrons are going to come in here back bonded. And what's that going to do? We'll do it without stair chemistry here yet. Uh, boom. So we get this iodonium ion, and that's a plus charge. Okay, where does this, the Cl minus that got kicked off is now going to act as a nucleophile. And these electrons will come in here. Where is it going to attack? Right here, correct? Comes in here and kicks off the iodine. And what's our product going to be? This will give product. Iodine is now here, and we're going to have the chlorine here. <coughs> and right now I'm not worrying about steric chemistry. I almost drew this chlorine here, but I thought it would be an ugly bond angle. Doesn't matter, as long as the chlorine is connected there. Don't matter right now, as long as the iodine is here. This is just the regiochemistry. Where things are going to be bonded. What regions are things going to be bonded to? That's it. By green. Okay. Now let's consider stereochemistry. Does this product have any stereochemistry? Yes. What do we see here? Two chiral carbons. Two chiral carbons. One and two. That's not chiral. That's not chiral. Okay. What's going to be the stair chemistry of these? Tell me again, I can't hear you, I'm probably sure people over there can't hear you. Maybe trans. What would be trans? Okay, let's focus on the chlorine, forward or back? Why? Whichever, it's the opposite of what our eye is, whether, whether you draw eye forward or back. So it could be like this, or it could be like that. Yeah. Okay. Because the eye is both there. Okay. Is the product chiral? Okay. What does that question mean? No, that's not what the question means. The question is, is the product chiral? Because yesterday we drew something that had chiral carbons, but it wasn't chiral as a whole. Okay, here's how I would do this. This is thinking. It's all good thinking. Alright? Here's how I would do it. We could come in here 
And we could we could try to draw these like you said, draw this bolded and then draw something else dashed. I think it's going to be too confusing. Here's how I recommend you do it. If you want to take my recommendation. I'm going to turn this first, and this is described up here. Turn that, alright? I'm just going to redraw this. I'm going to draw the alkene just straight. The two isopropyl groups are coming off the alkene, right? Mm -hmm. Are they cis or trans? Are the isopropyls cis or trans? They're trans. I'm going to do that over here, but I'm going to use dash or, or something. I'm going to make this one going back. And I'm going to make this one coming forward. A trans. What else is on the alkene? Methyl. It's here. But I'm going to have to do this like this. Because it's cis to that other right. Okay. I just turned it. See here it's flat on the board. I'll do it like this. Okay? Here it's like this. Here's the alkene and to call my thumb the isopropyl and it's drawn straight up at the board. All I've done is I've taken this alkene and turned it like this. Now the thumb is going which way? Back. Now the thumb's going back. See, now it's going back. And guess what? If I could make my pinky like spot do like that, right? When I turn my hand, how's the pinky coming out? Forward, but the thumb's going back. That's all I've done. I've just turned it 90 degrees. All right? But that's very powerful because now I have projections that can be in my final product. I understand what I just did? All I did is I turned the alkene from flat on the board to this way, and now things are either forward or back. Still a relative positioning. Now, which, which carbon does the iodine end up on? That one. Chlorine here. So what I'm going to do now is take my pencil. That's why I always use pencil. I'm going to erase the double bond. And now I'm going to put the chlorine there. We can connect these a little bit better since I erased it. It's not quite as connected. For example, now when you put these here, you already have one back and one forward. One in the plane. The other new thing we can put in the plane. What goes on this carbon? Chlorine? <coughs> draw the chlorine straight down. Now again, this looks a little disconnected because I had no bond there. I can, I can make it disconnected a little bit better. Since I drew the chlorine down, we're with an iodine over here. How do you want to draw the iodine? Let me straight up. Now you already, some of you had already told me that they're going to be trans, right? How does this reaction take place? It's an anti-addition. Why? We didn't show it over here, but if this iodine here was forward, that would also have to be forward, and you can draw this in here. It has to be. And if that's forward, how is this coming in? Back. Back. So that would be da that would be dashed, and this would be forward. That's the anti. But here's the anti. I showed it here. Well, guess what? There's your product. We're done. And you have the right stereochemistry. Stereochemistry was really set when we turned the alkene, and then we put these in right. But guess what? You also get something else here. And one or two of you mentioned this. How else could we draw this? Pouring up an iodine down. We can draw the same exact way. All right, I'm going to put these. The same. You don't have to only turn it once. Isopropyl. Okay, same as we had it, except put the chlorine here up 
and put the iodine down. Also a trans addition or anti addition of the two halogens across the pipeline. So does the plus mean like that they can kind of just switch back and forth or does no. the plus just mean like or? It's and. And. Okay. And. Here you get both of these. Because these two could have also been dashed. Basically, if we go back over here, and instead of just going straight there, here's the alkene. Right, we had the alkene. Get rid of that and make the intermediate. What's the intermediate here? Iodonium. The iodonium, hold on, not dashed or bold. Any new thing is going to be in the plane. We've already got dashed and bold. Iodonium could be like this. But it can also be like what? It can also be straight down. By the way, just because I drew this up a little bit and this down a little bit, there's really no difference. It's just a better bond angle. They're still both forward, both back. Okay? You get both of these. Because you got that pie face, and it either comes from the top or bottom. Alright? Then how do you get products? Cl minus, then a tax here. Which carbon? Here. Tax here. This is straight down, so how does the chlorine come in? Straight up. Kicks that off. And this leads to which one? That leads to that. But you also got this. The iodine straight up. How does the chlorine come in? Straight down. Comes in straight down, kicks, and which one do you get? Hold on, we're attacking the wrong carbon here. We're attacking the wrong carbon here. It attacks here straight down. And which one do we get? Here, chlorine straight down, iodine straight up. You see? You get both of these, thus you get both of these. What's the relationship between these two? It's a little bit hard to see, but unless you just... What's the relationship between these two? Enantiomers. They are enantiomers because if you do R and S, putting the... Everything's the same, we just change the chlorine from down to up. These are enantiomers. <coughs> They're enantiomers. <coughs> and what's the ratio of these are going to be formed? 50-50. What do we call 50-50 mix? We've only said it one time. Racemic mixture. <coughs> Don't tell anybody I told you this. Any, any reaction we do right now with alkenes, if it gives a chiral product, it will always be a racemic mixture of the two enantiomers. Because you typically are going to attack both sides, and that will lead to a receiving mixture if the product is chiral. I've shown you this to explain how we get there. When you're doing these, though, you know it's an anti addition, and you know which halogen the, the which carbon the chlorine goes on, or whatever. So you can put these in here. Turn it first. New things, I recommend putting them in the plane, straight up or straight down. That's how I recommend doing this. Uh, we can finish it up, but let's take a two-minute break. Uh, if you want to keep working, whatever the questions are, there.
finish this up. I know it says draw Fisher projection. Right here. Draw Fisher projection right here. And we'll do that to see how we're doing with Fisher projection. Your choice. Either one you want to draw on a Fisher projection. Let's do this one here. We'll do that. Okay, guys, let's look at this uh, Fisher projection with isopropyls at the top and bottom. Isopropyl, isopropyl. Two chiral carbons here and here. So we need two crosshairs. We got isopropyls at top and bottom. It doesn't matter which which end is going to be the top or bottom, thus. I'm going to make this be the bottom and this, this the ground. So if this is the ground, we have one isopropyl at the bottom, and that isopropyl is going to be away from the ground, it will be at the top. I'm going to stand on the ground and look through here. Then I'm hovering up there. What's on this carbon going straight away from me? Chlorine. I'm we'll going to draw the chlorine here. Doesn't that mean that that chlorine is going away from me if I draw it there? Top is going away. Sides are... I'm right here. If I agree that chlorine is going away from us? Yes. Well, that's why I'm up here. 
So the chlorine is going away from me. With the chlorine going away, which side is the isopropyl on? Left. Coming towards you guys, I'm up here. Isopropyl is on the left. With the chlorine going away, the isopropyl is on the left. With the chlorine going away, what's on the right coming off of this carbon? Methyl. Methyl, because it's going behind the board. If I'm up here, behind the board's on the right. Methyl on the right. Question. Do you know the isopropyl on the top and bottom of the Fisher projections? Do what? So it says top and bottom with the isopropyl groups that are on the top and the bottom of the Fisher projections? Yes. Directly say put the isopropyl groups on top and bottom. So does it be with the chlorine? I'm not done. Uh, <laughs> yeah, can't we just draw it like this and then... Yeah. I, I understand your question. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. When we're done and we say here's our answer, we need to make sure we have all the right. I agree. This is how we do it, though. If you want my recommendation. My recommendation is meant to be the easiest for you. All right. If I'm up here and the isopropyl is going back, Away from me, how's the methyl projecting? I can't tell. I do it like this. Because if I'm up here and the chlorine's going away from me, I can clearly see this. Okay? Now, let's move down to this carbon. <coughs> There's an undrawn H here coming forward. Okay? How do you want to do it? Put the grips around the carbon. I would look at this with the thing in the plane going away from me, which is what? Iodine. With the iodine going away, I'm going to put the iodine here. With the iodine going away, which side is the isopropyl on? Right. With the iodine going away, which side is the isopropyl on? This is the guy that switched. Yeah, the guy's down here. Yes, I need to put the guy over here. Okay? Guy down here. With the iodine going away, see that's going away from me? The isopropyl is on this side. The right. The right. The left. The left. The left. The right. Wait, did you change where the ground was? Uh, I'm trying to lay here. I'm on the sofa here, right? <laughs> So my body's like this. The iodine going away from me, what size is the isopropyl on? Where's the ground? If it's going away from you and you're facing it this way, it would be on your way. Okay, a couple of you have identified the problem. My feet are in the air. The ground is this way. I need to turn this way and keep my feet on the ground. The ground is here. Oh, I now it's The ground is here. Pretend I'm laying like this. Got to keep your feet on the ground. Common mistake. I'm laying here. Pretend this is me laying. Now look at this carbon. What's going straight away from me? Iodine. iodine. With the iodine going straight away, what side is the isopropyl on? Left. So behind the board, that's my left. With the iodine going away, isopropyl is on the left. What's on the right? Hydrogen. An undrawn hydrogen. Yes, it is. It has to be there. Okay, is that how we were asked to draw it? No. No. Well, guess what? Fisher projections, these three at the top can just rotate like a dial. Okay? They can just rotate. Q 
you hold this down here, chlorine green. Going back, isopropyl black, methyl red. You just hold this, these three can just spin. Okay? And if the chlorine, if you turn it and the chlorine is now to the right, that makes this go back. So I'm, I'm just turning it on the board this way. Chlorine here, this will go here. And the methyl, methyl's red. If I put the chlorine on the right, where does the methyl move to? Left. Right. Correct. It just spins. You can just turn it. So I can just turn this here. Same thing at the bottom. I can just turn this this way. Now we will have, the way it's supposed to be drawn, isopropyl at the top. That puts the chlorine where? Right. right. Here, and the methyl here. Isopropyl at the bottom. Puts what? Iodine on the right. Iodine here and H here. And that's the same compound. I have just turned it. Yes, you can do this. Very straightforward. Now, as was pointed out, we were asked to draw the isopropyl at top and bottom. There's your answer. Yes, it is. What else were we asked? Is it a rethro or a three o? A rethro. Chlorine is high priority here. Iodine is high priority here. What is that? Rethro. We did this one. If you do this one, you can do it on your own. This is the enantiomer. <coughs> do it. Make sure you can do it. It's going to be an enantiomer of this. That is, when you draw it, these two will be on this side, and these two will be over here. It'll be the mirror image. And what will be the answer for it? A rethro or a three of it? A rethro. It will also be a rethro. Because the mirror image of a rethro is a rethro. This reaction only gives a rethro. In this case, this example, you only get a rethro. Okay, questions about this. They're somewhere here, either above or right below. Questions we could ask about this. Is this reaction we just did regioselected? Yes. yes. Explain. Why is it regioselected? Yes. Because iodine ended up one plate, one region, and chlorine the other. Do you get any product with iodine here? No. No. That would be a regioisomer. Okay? This reaction is regioselective. Is this reaction diastereoselective? Diastereo. What, what's the possible choices for diastereomers? What would be a diastereomer of this product? If we put both of these over here? Would that be an enantiomer? What would be a diastereomer of this? Like if one, just if one is switched. Put the chlorine here? Yeah. Would that still be a rethro? No. no. That'd be 3 O. 3 O is a diastereomer. What are types of diastereomers? Cis trans, also a rethro 3 O. They're diastereomers. Do we get any 3 O in this reaction? No. So did we get only one diastereomer? Yeah. yeah, we only got three of them. I'm sorry. We only got a rethro. So it is diastereoselective. 
no frio. Can it be regio selective and not diastereomer selective? Diastereomer I have to think. I don't want to think. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking probably yes, but I, I have to think. Um, if you show me the example, I'd be able to tell you. I would hope if you saw the example, then you'd be able to say, yeah, it's redo it, but okay. Need more concrete example. Uh, is it an anti-selective? No. Because <laughs> it's racemic. Did we only get one enantiomer of possibility? What did I tell you? Well, we got it right here. Do we, this is the one we drew. Do you only get this one, or do you also get the enantiomer? Yes, you get the enantiomer and a 50-50 mix. So, did it, is it was it selected for one or the other? Yeah. No, and I've already told you. And I said, don't tell anybody I told you this. I said that none of the reactions we're going to be doing right now are going to be an anti selective. We're always going to get a 50-50 mix if enantiomers are possible. The answer to an anti-selective will always be no right now. Does those three terms make sense? Yes. And assessing the reactions. Okay, let's finish some of this up. Uh, resolution, we may look at that during the lab lecture. Uh, brief, brief history of chirality on the back. Uh, and we may also do a little bit more of the warm-up page. Here's some more of these reactions here. <coughs> the way we did all this, pretty comprehensive. Because we had two chiral carbons in the product, not just one, two. And all these are like that. And basically, we say that both of these carbons are prochiral. Both of these are going to end up being chiral in the product. They're both prochiral. When you have two prochiral carbons, you've got to look at it in a little more detail here, like this. Okay, we'll pull some of this together. I want to get us started on alkynes. Uh, we'll see how much we, we can do during the lab lecture. Okay. Try to do some, take some time to do some problem working. <coughs> okay, our next handout, I think it's the last one before test two, is... Alkynes. Chemistry of alkynes. Keep your feet on the ground. Keep reaching for the stars. I know you said that every week.
Okay, alkynes. All right, functional group. Yeah. Two pi bonds. All right, the, the reactions will be quite similar as with alkenes, except because there's two pi bonds, it will be twice the fun. Okay. All right, here's some example reactions. For, we'll react with HX, like HBr. Same thing. Electrons are going to attack the H plus, yeah? Where are you going to leave cation, right or left? Be left. Okay, very similar question. Uh, that will give uh, this alkene with a halogen added. But guess what? That's an alkene. Alkenes react with HX. So it can react again, and you end up with two halogens. Just likes to fun. A little bromine. Why are the halogens trans? Ammonium ion, dioxide attack. Product gives an alkene. Can an alkene react with bromine or chlorine? Sure. Yeah, it, so it reacts again, twice the fun. By the way, this product has stereochemistry because you've got a stereogenic alkene. There's no stereochemistry here, is there? If X's are all the same, not Carl, there's no, there's no stereochemistry. All right. Well, also hydrate alkene, alkynes. Now, in alkynes, it's not twice the fun. You only hydrate one time. And this is review uh, intro. We'll look at this in detail. You only hydrate once. After you hydrate, we've added water. It's called an enol. The new H is over here. This undergoes a rearrangement called a tautomerization. And you actually get a carbonyl compound, in this case a ketone. That's pretty fun, then, but it's just not the same fun as the first part. Different kind of fun. BH3, similar reagents, right? Okay. Uh, let's get into it. There's some drugs with alkynes and alkenes. Nomenclature, we will do that here. Just as with alkenes, except we use the ion ending. <clears throat> First off, we have two different types of alkynes, terminal versus internal. Okay? Terminal. Internal. What do we see here? The terminal alkyne the alkyne is at the end of the chain. Thus, the carbon of the alkyne has an H. Terminal alkyne. Internal, the carbons of the alkyne are bonded to other carbons. Thus, do not have an H. Okay? So this is your SPCH. Will that H always be drawn? Uh, no, not always. I'm trying to remember if I do. I don't think I draw the H. Aldehyde, I would draw the H. No. The SPCH has a decent amount of acidity, so we will be able to do acid base reaction there. It requires a strong base. Okay? We will see that. <coughs> The last thing in this handout. <coughs> okay, nomenclature. Very straightforward, as with others. Longest continuous chain, let's name the first one. One, two, three. Okay, you've got to be careful because this is linear, sp linear. You can sometimes lose track of it if it's a carbon. One, two, three, four, five. So what do we have here? Not a pentane, but a pent. And time, where is the where is the alkyne at? What position? One, two, yes. One, two, three, 
We just list the first position one pin time. Can alkynes be stereogenic? Any stereochemistry at the alkyne? No. No. You have boom, boom, or boom, boom. It's linear. There's no alternative. It has to just come off here. What if I instead draw this like that? What if I switch this to this? That's just a bond rotation. That's nothing. That's not Carl. Right? It's irrelevant. Right? There's no stereochemistry here. Alkynes are not stereogenic. Never. What is this name of this compound here? Three heptine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. One, two. I think that's three. Because this way, that would be four. Yes. Three. Heptine. Yes. What if we put a chlorine here and made it like that? Six chloro three have time. Because what takes priority? The alkene or alkyne takes priority for numbering. Anything else we need for that? Is that an un <coughs> unambiguous name? We need anything else for that name? Yes, we need R, right? Will I show R stereochemistry? You could also have an S version, right? Is that R? Very good. Question? There's an alkene in alkyne, but alkyne takes priority over alkyne. I'm not sure. We're not going to be doing that. You can check the nomenclature book. It'll tell priority of all functional groups. Uh, carboxylic acid is like the king of all functional groups. It would always take priority. Typically, more, the higher oxidized takes more priority. <clears throat> that makes me think alkyne would take priority, but for some reason, I think that's wrong. We won't be doing that. Um, there you go. Name looks good. <clears throat> okay, reactions. Electrophilic conditions, just as with alkenes. What do we have here? We can just show it ionic. These electrons are not held that tight. Pi electrons, they will attack the electrophiles. Where are we going to leave cation at? Right or left? On the left. On the left. So these electrons break away from the left. I'm going to draw this bent like this. New H on the end. For some reason, I feel like I, could, I should draw both of them on the end. There's now two on the end. And what's now on the second carbon? Carbocation. Because there's no H here. There's still no H, but it's only three bonds. Okay, let's look at this for a second. First off, it's called a vinyl cation. Because a cation is on a double bond. And vinyl is sort of slang for double bond. The 
You may have heard of vinyl chloride. And if you polymerize vinyl chloride, what do you get? That's right, polyvinyl chloride. <laughs> which is what? PVC. <laughs> which is what? White pipe hose. Plastic. I think I think irrigation hose, white irrigation hose is usually PVC. Okay? Vinyl chloride. Vinyl alkene. Okay? Uh, another slang for alkene is olefin. Where have you seen olefin at this week? The worksheet. On the golden, yes, worksheet. All right. What's the hybridization of this cation? Let's think about structure for a minute. Hybridization and geometry. Isn't it not SP3. I see two regions around it. Double bond, single bond. It's SP. That's SP. It's still SP. And thus it should be what? Geometry. Linear. Actually, it should still be linear. I drew it bent because it's going to be bent in the product. But I just want to point this out. Okay? If you drew it actually correct, it should actually still be linear here. All right? But we're going to this. What adds to the positive? These electrons add here. What do you get? Well, there you go, right? Now it's sp2. Now it's trigonal planar. And that's the right bond angle over there now. Anything different from what we've done before? We only react one pi bond. There's a pi bond left. Can, can, can an alkene react with HCl? Yeah. Yes. Refer to question one on the quiz today. That was just HBR. Okay. Do I need to do a mechanism for this next step? Does that look like the product? Is the other chlorine going to be on the same place as the first one? Yeah. Let's do it because there's going to be something important here. H plus, Cl minus. Where are you going to leave cation, left or right? On the left, even though this chlorine's here, it's still got a rich carbon friend. We need to look at that. Cation here. I drew in the new H only. Then the chloride attacks the cation. That's how you get the product. Okay. But talk to me about the stability of that cation. It's got that chlorine attached to it. It is electron withdrawing by how though? Induction. Inductively? Because well, there's different ways things can do this. Inductively. When we talk about electronegativity, that's usually we're talking about induction through a single bond. Yes, it's electron withdrawing inductively. Is that going to help the cation or hurt it? Hurt it. Hurt it. That would hurt it. But what about this? That helps it. This is the best cation. The chlorine here actually supplies some resonance. And resonance is a good thing. draw a resonance structure here. If we were drawing this on day one, we would say, huh, carbon needs another bond. How can you get another, draw another bond here? <coughs> we can say chlorine, but we're going to have to ask you to share. And what does this give? Double bond to chlorine, two long pairs, and this is now a positive on chlorine. This is a resonance structure for 
all we have moved is pi electrons. We didn't move any atoms. Hybridization <coughs> here. sp2 with an empty p orbital. What's the hybridization of the chlorine? Anytime a lone pair is next to a pure orbital, it's going to want to be in a pure orbital. Mm -hmm. Is there a pure orbital here? Yes. That's P2 with an empty pure orbital. One of these lone pairs is also in a pure orbital. We can draw that here. One of these in a pure orbital. There's an empty pure orbital here. It's SP2, empty pure orbital. If you graph it, well, guess what? These electrons are interacting there. You got to see that. And the way we show that is to show another structure. You see, now we're showing the interaction that mm -hmm. lead to a pi bond. You got to just know that's there. We do this by showing alternative structures, and we call that a resonance structure. The true structure is in between. That is, how much does this chlorine like to share? We're single bonded. Who wants to single bond? Okay, over here. I got a lone pair and you're a cation. I'm like, well, physics. These electrons are going to be attractive. Make, this, make a magical bond. But I'm chlorine. I don't like to do this. I want to keep my electrons. So I'm not fully committed. Let's just, let's just make a pinky bond. And in real life, this is sort of how it is. This is hard to show on the board. Instead, we show, okay, absolutely no bonding between the two, and full bonding between the two. But what's the true structure? Somewhere in between. And that's called the resonance hybrid. And it's going to have these partial bonds. Okay? But what we do is we draw the two, two extremes and say it's in between. Because the extremes are easier to draw. They're more simplified a little bit. Okay, that's resonance. And anytime you can have, here's a take on major point. If you can, resonance allows for what? The charge has been delocalized. The charge is actually on the chlorine sum. If you look at that in between hybrid. And if you can spread charge up, that's a good thing. There's a chapter in subchapter in the book about charge delocalization. Mm -hmm. Resonance. Chapter one or two. So we do have a resonance structure, resonance error. But the final the final product comes from chloride attacking here. There you go. By the way, when you have resonance structures, you can work with either one of them, or any of them, in your mechanism. For example, we could also get the final product from this mechanism, from this structure. It still attacks here because you got two chlorines here. But you would have to attack here, and when you attack, what would you have to do to get there? You got to move these up. You can always work with any resonance structure. Either one. Is there only one intermediate for the whole thing? Uh, it depends on if you're talking about that there. From here to here, there's only. Good question. How many intermediates is this? Four. Four. How many intermediates is this? Four. Four. It's only one intermediate. Whenever we do resonance, we're not do, we're not showing a different compound. We're showing a different representation of the same compound. 
Resonance is also like this a little bit, like colors. Pink is a blend of red and white. Okay. The intermediate is pink. But what if pink was hard to explain? Could I, could I say, hey guys, what we have here is a blend of these two. It's just one color. The color's pink, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure how to explain pink as well. Can I show red and white and ask you to just understand it's somewhere in a mix of these? This is just one color I'm trying to talk about. This is just one intermediate. Okay, we'll do more resonance, more resonance, and then we'll, finally we'll cover resonance. All right. Let's pick up pieces along the way. There's supported resonance there. Uh, let's see, miscellaneous things. I point out these miscellaneous things because I anticipate questions. I hear these types of questions all the time. Why did you draw both chlorines up? I mean, this looked like it came down. Why didn't you draw the one chlorine up and one like that? It don't matter. You can draw however you want. That's not chiral. I didn't even show the tetrahedral nature. As long as you have two chlorines attached to that carbon, you're good to go. Right? You see that? These are little questions you just got to ask and just get past. And, but I see them all the time. It seems to... You guys will spend an hour just thinking about that. So I try to tell you these things in advance. Make sense? How do you want to draw? So what is a geminal dihalide then? Gemini. Anybody, anybody, anybody a Gemini? What does Gemini mean? Hmm? I can't hear. I thought you said twins. Yeah, twins. Why are those chlorines called twins? Because they're on the same carbon. Yeah. It's called a geminal dichloride. What's a vesinal dichloride? They're not. On, they don't live in the same on, on the same address, but they live in the same vicinity. Vesinal. And usually when we say vesinal, we're talking about one, two, next door to you. <coughs> but not like one, seven. Well, usually vesinal refers to one, two. And today in lab, and tomorrow in lab, you'll be making a vesinal dibromide. By reacting alkene with BR2. Question? Uh, why isn't the alkene with the cation considered an intermediate? Over here? Yes. Well, I was talking about this here. Oh, okay. So there are two total for the entire reaction? Okay, we can do that. If you want to, I, I showed it as two separate reactions. That's okay. We could do one reaction and go from here to here and call ACL, but you would need how many ACLs if you went from here to here? Two. Two, two equivalent. Two molar equivalent for every mole of this. Isn't that what? That's what that is, right? It's just saying. Okay. It just depends if you're doing it stepwise. Okay. If you were like at least one step, that's if you have to write. Wait, so are there three intermediates? Because doesn't that middle portion before you attack it again with HCl, isn't that an intermediate as well? Okay, and then we have to define what an intermediate is. We're talking about, talk about charged intermediates, mechanism intermediates. Isolatable intermediate heating. Okay. The question is complex. You have to better define it. There's one isolatable intermediate. But that even very okay. I would I wouldn't get into this, which is probably why I, I, I did not. Um, if you go from here to here, there's only one intermediate. I drew two different forms of that one intermediate called resonance structures. All the tests you want us to try. Are y'all just trying to lane so we don't get through this handout today? Yes. <laughs> Wait, no, my 49. question was a real question. <laughs> <laughs> On the test, do you want us to draw the resonance structures, or is it like only if you say, like, would both of them be accepted? 
You just drew one. For me, you do not have to draw a resident so much you're asked to draw it. I would certainly know when it's there and be ready to draw it to ask. Neither structure is real. They're both fake. <laughs> the true structure is in between. It's like if I asked you to draw pink and I said, there. It's neither man or white. But these are what we draw because they're easier to draw. But you know that. You gotta know they're pink. If you just want to draw red, we'll get to that. Uh, let's see where we can finish up in. Uh, reaction below. Pretty straightforward. You should know why it's E and not Z. That is why the bromines are trans. Uh, we'll pick up here, but let's just look ahead just a bit as we finish up what's next. Okay. The new thing will be over here in the hydration. We'll hydrate once, but then we will do something called tautomerization. This is just a rearrangement. Same formula. We will go from this structure called an enol, that is the alcohol is on the ene, so it's an enol. It will rearrange to a carbonyl compound, a ketone here, just a rearrangement, same formula. We will look at that tautomerization there, that's one of the major things with this handout. I uh, see some of you in lab this afternoon right here. Again, there will be lecture material.